Yep, y'all read the title. We finna get off into some ratchet shit. First, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. <clears throat> what would you do if your best friend reached out to your child's father and told him that the baby doesn't belong to him, it belongs to her brother? Hi, and welcome to the only drama worth telling y'all about in my life. Me and my best friend fell out about three years ago. Okay, a year after that, I had my daughter. We fell out because of a birthday dinner. Mine, to be exact. You know how women are with their birthdays and the was broke. It happened. Now, in the year of no contact with her, I conceived my daughter. Okay? As soon as I have my daughter, she messages me on Facebook and says, congratulations. I didn't say anything because fuck you. Six months later, she reaches back out and says, who's your daughter's dad? And I'd say, it's none of your business. Three weeks after that, she reaches out again and says, I think it belongs to her brother. And I say, don't you ever text me with no crazy shit like that again, okay? A year after that, at this moment, I'm still talking to her, my child's dad. Say, bro, can we just take the time out of our day to acknowledge that I be right, dog? I told y'all, women will fall out over the simplest things because they are so entitled. They think the world revolves around them a lot of times. Oh, she couldn't make it to my B-Day dinner. That bitch got me... <laughs> A nigga would never. Bro, some of my partners I've been cool with for 20 plus years, dog. If you can't make it to my birthday, bro, I'm sorry. It's cool. We gonna, you know what I'm saying, bro? It don't make no sense. A year after that, she reaches out to the dad because I guess my ignoring her wasn't good enough. She reaches out to the dad and says, hey, I think you should do a DNA test on your daughter because I don't think it belongs to you. He blowing me up. Now, at this time, I work seven on seven off overnight. He blowing me up, blowing me up. I'm like, what is going on? It's late. You should be asleep. And I finally answer. And he says, check your messages. So I check my messages and it's screenshots of her messaging him. And basically comparing pictures of his young kids, her brothers, to my daughter and saying how much they look alike. So I reassure him. I'm like, look, there's literally no possible way. I haven't even talked to this woman. She just mad we fell out. I mean, hell, I was a good friend. And I'm going to stand on that. So it is what it is. Ignore her. If you want to go get a paternity test, I'm 100% open to it. I didn't mind because I knew I had nothing to hide. He says, like, no, I'm okay. You, you said no. I'm good. I trust you. I believe you. All right. So now another year passes and me and him break up. We stop talking or whatever. And, of course, things get on social media and she gets wind of it. She used this opportunity to reach out to him again, his sister and his mom, to tell them that his child or my child or our child doesn't belong to them. Say, bro, real talk. Honestly, let's keep it real, bro. If you the dude and you receive a text message from your baby mama friend saying that your baby could be for her brother. Oh, the brother. Listen, it's going to be some furniture movement around that bitch to say the least dog because you ain't even really got a second to really process that that is so specific like think of that bro like you get a text message from a old friend of your baby mama man that baby not beef it might not be for you the baby might be for my brother oh shit boy i lose my shit boy i wouldn't even be thinking logically dog because why at this point, I'm furious because not only did her dad need a reason to already kind of go ghost, this just gave him more ammunition. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to send both of y'all in a group message, a DNA um, testing website. And you can use it to your disposal. I'm not spending a dime. Other than that, we can go to court. Time goes on. Time goes on. Now the family has disowned my child. Her dad has disowned her. And the girl, I done reached out a million times trying to put her on blast. And she immediately goes ghost because she knows she's lying right so at this point i've decided to take him to court we finally get to court and we get up to the podium and the judge says in order to start distributing funds we have to establish paternity so he says do you want to get a paternity tell me why this man opts out i turned around so quick and looked at him like what the fuck and he gonna say i always knew i was just mad we broke up yeah say fellas can we keep it real with ourselves bro we all didn't heard of a nigga who ain't want to take care of his kids because the baby mama don't want to be with him no more, bro. Can we keep it real? Keep it real. Keep it gutter. Can we keep it real, bro? They got some bitch ass niggas out here, dog. Oh, I, I don't want to deal with the kids because the mama don't want to deal with me no more. She got a new nigga. Boy, that's your kids, man. What you mean? Oh, Lord. I, I couldn't do it, bro. <laughs> so out of all of this, I'm sure y'all are wondering what on earth would prompt somebody to be so invested in a situation that literally had nothing to do with her. You know why? 
because my child is dark skinned as y'all have seen on my page but my child's father and I have the same, same skin tone and you can tell who's uneducated and who's not you know what I'm saying because black people have amazing genetics okay our pool is so broad it don't make no sense so even if I came out with a white baby with red hair it could have been out. So both her and her brother are dark skinned. So it just only made sense that my child belongs to her brother, right? Don't you guys sleep together for that? And if you haven't already gotten your kicker, here's your kicker, okay? The brother dead. Yep, he gone, he gone. And he hasn't even been here to defend himself during all of these accusations. Shit, wow, right? So after almost three years, a restraining order later, a warrant for her arrest, talking to her parents, and blogging her on all outlets, she has finally left me alone. So when I get on here and talk shit about folks, look, I've been through some things too, okay? And I know one thing, I'll never go through it again. I learned that first time. I, I did, I did. And um, at this big age, I'm very selective on who I call my friend, who I let in my business. And um, yeah, who I sleep with. <laughs> my dog, check this out. Hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, if I were a woman and I had a child with a person, and he don't think the child for him, I'm running down to the nearest store and grab a at-home DNA test. Bitch, here you go. <laughs> I swear, take the test, nigga. Go get mad, man. We're going to swab him. We're going to swab your goof ass. And we finna submit the test right now. Because you ain't finna be out here calling me a harlot. A Jezebel. Now, nah, I said hypothetically. Of course, obviously, I'm all man. Damn, I need to lose a little weight. But yeah. All man, goddammit. But, just thinking, if you ain't got nothing to hide, you know the baby for me. What you hard up about the test for? Now you make me want to go get the test for real. Because you trying to convince me without the test that the baby for you. Nah, just, just, just offer the test. That makes sense? I'm just saying. I don't know what it is with the young boys. They they want to throw stuff out, but they can't take it back. They can't take what they dish out. The young boy want to call me old. I say, what? Why you always got to call me old? He say, you is old. It's true. You is old. Okay, I'm old. Well, let me tell you a truth. Your grandma got good inside the mouth skin. <laughs> That's true. You want to get mad. Oh, man. I wish a young boy would play with me, boy. Listen, do you know that a nigga like me could hit your mama, bro? Bro, I be out in public and niggas, like, little boys' mamas be looking at me and shit, man. Because I'm a sex symbol. I know this, man. <laughs> nah, but seriously, bro, like, nigga could hit your mama, bro. If I was a lesser man, if I was a, a, a unsavory creature, bro, I could be out here really just destroying niggas' egos, man. Like, little man, bro, your mama clearly want me, bro. Your daddy ain't around. You fuck around, boy. I bought him one hundred dollars worth of groceries in a cart, nigga. And your mama mine for cheap. <laughs> What's the dumbest thing you've ever done? Probably get caught looking down a mannequin's pants. Can't lie. <sighs> I was just a kid. I ain't know what I was doing. Yeah, you did. What are you looking nah. for? The fuck you did. I just thought maybe. I don't know. I don't know what I thought, but Fruity I just ass. thought I seen a little boy. I ain't know what I. I ain't know what it was. Why would you and want to looking. investigate it? Turn around, my dad was behind me. Yeah. <laughs> What'd your dad do? Oh, he didn't really say nothing. He just, I mean, I don't even think he talked the rest of the day, but. <laughs> I think I was yeah, disappointed in you. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> what was your thought process? Like, did you feel like you discovered something new? Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to be looking for chicken, that's why I I'm not gonna say I was hoping I was gonna find some, but like <laughs> you not saying was you wasn't hoping but, you know. would find some. <laughs> but you know, I think my dad thinks he's gay now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Why you had to look down a man's pants though? Like you didn't see no female mannequin dog. Yo, y'all remember that movie? It was about a mannequin that came to life and the little dude ended up taking a liking to it, bro. I forget the name of that movie, but it probably was called Mannequin if I'm being real. 
But nah, dog, you was you was acting zesty back then, partner. Uh, I hope your daddy kept a close eye on you. Uh, if he's expecting to meet the missus, he might be in for a rude awakening. But then again, he probably not surprised because he was looking down the pants of a male mannequin. That's troubling in and of itself, right there. <clears throat> well, I'm with you know who. Doing God knows what. Um, the group chat is pissed, but that's okay. Love you guys to death. Y'all see what I be talking about, bro? She probably told the group chat that she ain't dealing with Buddy no more. He didn't probably put hands on her once before, but man, I'm telling you, he touching the back of the oven or whatever it is that he doing, he got her mind. Sometimes, bro, I always say that dudes be touching the back of the oven or whatever, but. That really don't be it a lot of the times, dog. I'm going to tell you what it is. A lot of the times, the woman will be so in love with the dude because he just make her feel a certain type of way, dog. Real talk, like mentally. Like, he probably don't make her feel like she's the only girl in the world and she's used to feeling like that amongst mere mortal men, right? And they can't handle that. Oh, Lord. A lot of times, that breaks them down. Oh, folks, people. Somebody bitch get fucked this evening. Say, bro. In them warehouses, bro. Let me tell y'all why a lot of y'all girls gonna get hit at that warehouse, bro. Especially if you a black dude and your girl black and she might be from the hood, bro. There's a lot of hood niggas in them warehouses, bro. Dreadhead niggas, tall niggas, short niggas, stocky niggas. There's <laughs> a bunch of dudes in there, man. Like, all flavors, dog. And they all trying to hit her, bro. Somebody gonna get to her, bro. Somebody gonna crack the code, bro. Somebody gonna figure out how to solve her Rubik's Cube, nigga. I'm telling you what I know, bro. Like, man, you gotta have a strong-ass woman, boy. You gotta have a strong-ass woman. Man, you better not let your girl work in no damn warehouse for longer than two weeks, man. That's all it takes is two weeks. Nigga Joseph with her in the, in the break room. <laughs> oh, Lord. Say, bro, all it takes is two? It really don't even take two weeks if you really like that. It don't. I'm, hey, I ain't trying to scare nobody, bro. One of y'all watching this right now I'm finna go pop up at the Amazon. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. A lot of people be asking why me and my baby mama not together even though we got two kids. I'm gonna give you the simple reason. I'm gonna give you the long story. Simple reason is the pussy good. She is not good for me. Mm. Simple. Real the talk. real reason is I don't play that physical shit, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't mind arguing with a motherfucker. We can argue all day. We have our differences. That's cool. But when you start putting your hand on the motherfucker, that's where I draw the line, nigga. But I'm not finna just point my baby mama out like she bad. My baby mama is the greatest mother ever. I tell all the time, I'm grateful that you was my baby mama instead of any other female. Cause she do her fucking job regardless of what we got going on. Them kids always straight. I ain't tripping mm. about that shit. She was a she can cook, she can she clean, she do like all that shit. Says, so. I just don't condone putting no hands on the motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what you got. If you put your hands on me, we're done. <laughs> fuck nigga. Say, bro, a lot of times the mom will be the reason why these kids is growing up without their daddy, bro. Like, I, I ain't even mad at dude, bro. Like, I ain't finna tell you to try to make it work with no woman who blatantly disrespect you every time she get the chance to, bro. Like, why would I sit up there and tell you that? For the sake of the kids having happiness? Man, hell no, bro. Yo, happy. What you gonna be able to do for them if she got you depressed and stressed out and you can't even go out there and run that checkup? You get what I'm saying? Like, it don't make no sense. And if it don't make sense, it don't make dollars. And if it don't make dollars, I ain't got no holler, bro. It's really that simple, bro. Do what make you happy, bro. Straight up. And being with a disrespectful ass woman ain't making no man happy, bro. Come on, man. You somebody child, man. Remember that. Boy, get you some money. Let your money beat your conversation out all the time. You look at a woman and she talking about, what you looking at me for? I say, I'm looking at what I like. Uh, uh, excuse me. Then you run your hand in your pocket and pull out that knot. Uh, what were you saying? <laughs> you stupid. Okay. That's what they do. Oh, yes. Uh, now, now they got to read and pay attention. Say, bro, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, bro. Listen, women want a nigga that got some money. It ain't like all of them want to spend it frivolously or just wild out with it. The fact that you got it is just reassuring. Right, so you always gotta be chasing some type of money, dog, because you gonna have access to women 
that you wouldn't have had access to if you not a specimen it's really that simple though if you not like the most handsome tall charismatic charming type of nigga bro you gotta have another asset behind you so that you can attract what you're trying to get that don't mean you gotta give it to her it's just that she know it's tucked in the back just in case nigga need it <laughs> you see what i'm saying Unk right bro real talk don't no woman want a nigga that ain't got no bread i ain't telling y'all to go out there and simp or trick I'm just saying, get you some money for the sake of having it, and they gonna see that you having it. Yay. <laughs> I have a question for men and women. What is up with all of the pretty women being single? The most gorgeous women, like stunning, body proper, face card on, but they're single. What is it? I really get so confused when I see a beautiful woman with a nice body, with a nice face, and she's by herself. Man, that's simple, cause y'all are bird brains, delusional, entitled, disrespectful. Y'all don't have clean paths. We go out, every nigga in the building knows you and wants to hug you, and all of these niggas is your brothers. Niggas is watching this. It don't make no sense, like, bro, Mm -mm. that's why a lot of y'all single y'all don't know how to watch your mouth right some of y'all got way too many kids and there are dudes out here that'll deal with you if you got one kid but man two three by two or three different men that's mm -mm. that's a tough sell and another way i'm gonna put it is like patrice o'neill said it y'all selling what we're not looking to buy sell what we have already voiced we want to buy what is so complicated about that bro like i don't get it that's why most of y'all be single and y'all y'all expectations are delusional yesterday a man asked me out at a certain place that i am frequently at and he's really attractive and we have really good conversations you know as i'm coming and going from this place nothing too deep and i politely turned him down and here's why i know i'm gonna get called superficial number one I know that he does not make enough money. I make more money than him. And I have just learned that in most situations, if you make more money than the man, even though they might start off being encouraging and cool about it, sooner or later, it will start to eat at them. And But especially for black women, situations like that just don't turn out well. And not only do I make more money than him based on his, his job, he just doesn't make a, a lot period i'm just saying for me as a black woman it is not in my best interest to date someone in his particular financial area bear me the speech of well what if things go well you have to fall and the net will catch you there ain't no net honey especially for black women all right and this is not a romantic comedy this is real life say bro i ain't even really mad at that dog because when you date a woman that w makes way more money than you dog you really don't have a lot of leverage in that situation dog and even if you touching the back of the oven dog a date can always come where she just be like bro you gotta go she found a better back of the oven toucher you see what i'm saying it don't matter bro especially if you living in her house too oh they can't wait to kick you out bro they make songs about it nigga pack your shit you gotta go and then your ego gonna be playing at you because traditionally you've always known a man to supposed to have the resources but in your mind you ain't the man because she is handling business and you ain't handling business like that bro listen i know a dude one dude who dates a woman he's married to actually who makes more money than him and he said it works for them dog right cool all right more power to you to the average man it ain't gonna work bro i'm keeping it real all right now that i got the housekeeping out the way women like her almost always end up being single bro i'm gonna keep it real with y'all i ain't gonna sit up here and lie like i know a whole bunch of women who make a lot of money and they're just sitting at home alone up in their 50s 60s whatever the case may be but i know enough of them to know how that ends bro because man a woman feel like she better than a man when she make more money than him most of the time and especially since she was leaning in on the fact that she's a black woman bro i don't know no black woman who don't think that she better than the average black man if she's making a lot of money real talk do you know a businesswoman who make three four five six hundred thousand dollars a year and respects a man that's making forty fifty thousand dollars a month hell no it don't work like that they might smile up in your face they might let you touch the back of the oven but does she actually respect you i don't know bro who cares though
focus on the women who want to focus on you. 